Hey guys, what's up? Irish Emerald here, coach of your Wexler Waylords, and welcome to our week 18 building video for you guys this week, where we are up against Arashi, coach of the Groningen Noctowls. I think I got it right, I'm not too sure. It's definitely Noctowls, but Groningen, I think it's how the pronunciation. But, anyways, the front, Holland, seriously, Holland, other than Amsterdam, Rotterdam, and Eindhoven, figure it out, like, help. Help. I was I was gonna say figure help figure it out, but no, help. <laughs> Just help. I can't be like it's oh it's a nightmare. I like you guys know I can't pronounce words very well. So it is what it is. But anyways, Arashi is uh, unfortunately for him has had have, has not had a great season, but we that we cannot underestimate him nonetheless because we desperately need wins. At the point I'm recording this video, guys, I do not know where I stand in playoffs. Um because if you guys know like, you guys probably will know like in the future that week six happened like whatever happened week six ha happened but i don't know what happened in week six at the moment because of the way things have happened so i don't know where i am uh, with regards to playoffs but i just know that i need to win and that's it <laughs> that's literally it so we're going to come out with a really uh, with a team here this week and hopefully we can pick up another w for your wexa waylords uh Arashi's team as you can see above me now consists of Mew, which is his z captain um terrakion mega beedrill diggersby Roland wash gudra Comfy, Torkoal, Shiftry, Togdemaro, and Driplin, which is another one of his Z captains. And there's a couple of big threats on his team, of course, as, as there is on every team. Um, Mew can do everything, as we all know know well. Uh, know and love well. <laughs> and um, so Mew, obviously, we have to be able to cater for multiple different variants of that. Whether it be defensive, offensive, all that kind of good stuff, we just need to be able to cater for it. And he's got Terrakion and Diggersby, which are insane wall breakers, you know, in each for like similar but different reasons because they get like different coverage and it hits super effectively in different ways so that's obviously a very scary threat for us and particularly because we do not have a ghost type on our team it means that Teraki and Diggersby were able to get uh, like two of their stabs off very easily the whole time against us which is definitely scary it's definitely not easy for us but it is what it is and we have to deal with it and uh, he's got Mega Beedrill which has the top end speed and allows him to pivot out in and out Rodan Wash is a pivot Gudra is a bit of bulk Comfy is a big threat for my team with the draining kiss, with the uh, having plus, is it plus three or plus two? It has enough, it, it, plus two, two or plus three priority, but basically it's going to outspeed any priority I have and be able to pick off Kumo and Greninja, which is very unfortunate. And then I think after that, I'm not too concerned with Torkoal, Shifty, Togdemar, or Driflum because I feel like those four mods don't match up anywhere near good enough against my team. If he brings Torkoal, he has to bring Sun, and he does not want to give me V-Crate in the Sun because there's no one that wants that can take, take two hits from V-Crate in the Sun. Uh, if Shiftry's going to come, it needs the Sun for support to be able to get the uh, Chlorophyll and be able to work. Togdemar gets rolled by Agron, and Driftblim, I just don't see I just don't see where it comes in and does work against my team because I got Mammoth Swine and other bits and bobs. I got Greninja. Like, I got stuff that really, uh, like, my offense does an awful lot of work to Drifloom. So I don't see him doing any of that. So he's definitely got an awful lot of tools to his disposal there. Um, but for me, the main threats are tracking on Diggersby. But anyways, we're going to dive right into my team. I'm uh, going to walk you guys through it, what we're bringing and all that kind of good stuff. And first things first, we are bringing a very offensive Sylvie on this week with Choice Specs. Sylvie's coming back out. We'll hyper voice uh, Psyshock. Shadow Ball and Hidden Power Ground. To be honest, Hyper Voice is the move of choice here. There's, like the other four moves are there just for filler, like in case we need we need something. But base, but it's all about Hyper Voice, Side Shock, Shadow Ball. Uh, it's all about Hyper Voice, really. It's all about Hyper Voice here, Sylvia. We're running Choice Specs, Modest Nature, two fifty two special attack because he's got nothing that wants to come in on this. He's got absolutely nothing on this team. You look at his whole team. He's got nothing that wants to come in on Specs Hyper Voice from Sylveon. Absolutely nothing. Beedrill, if Beedrill comes in, it takes 50% from Specs Hyper Voice, give or take, depending on if it's got much bulk investment, but it's taken 50%. That's not a switch in, no matter what. Uh, Mew, no. Terrakion, no. Diggersby, no. There's nothing that wants to come in and take a, uh, a Specs a Hyper Voice, which means that we put an awful lot of pressure on our team. Uh, what's it called? With Sylveon uh, on Orochi's team, which is absolutely fantastic because. Um, he won't know what hit him the first time, and then he'll be trying to. And then once he knows that we're specs, and he has to completely adjust his game plan because he has to look at his roster and realize, okay, whenever Sylvan comes in, it's going to claim a kill essentially, which is not really, which is good for us, but not really good for him. So we can put an awful lot of pressure, especially once we land the first hyper voice to really scare him. We have 220 speed. In order for us to outspeed zero, or I think like four speed 
Road and Wash. So it's just enough speed for us to be able to speed creep uh, on, invest, on invested speed Road and Wash, which is a really good scenario for us because normally, like he probably be expecting Sylveon to come in on Road and Wash, he'd be taking all oh, this defensive variant, I can both switch out I, and all that kind of good stuff because he's going to naturally out speed. Uh, when he notices that we he cannot do that with my Sylveon, then he's a me uh, what's it called because he's going to go full switch. We're going to click Hyper Voice. We're going to get about fifty percent on. Well, not fifty percent. We're going to get a huge chunk on Road and Wash, if not outright kill, depending on the spread and what not. We're going to be able to just break through Road and Wash, and then that thing's not pivot anymore. And Road and Wash is going to be big for him. I feel like this week because it has to come in and out on our offense the whole time to be able to make sure that we don't overrun him. So. I think you know with him being able to, with him thinking he can outspeed us, Road and Wash clicks hyper uh, Wash call Sylveon clicks hyper voice. That thing's de that thing's near enough dead and it's absolutely fantastic. After that, we're bringing Mushroom Aramungus. You can tell I'm bringing a lot more of the more bulkier stuff to start with when I was building, but uh, I felt like we had to bring Amoongus this week, and we have a and we're bringing a very physical defensive Amoongus this week. And the reason why is because of the two of the main ones I mentioned, Trakion and Diggersby. I need an answer for those two. Amoongus gives me that answer that I so desperately need, which is absolutely fantastic. There's not one move that Diggersby or Trekon can go for that two hit KOs me. Maybe a banded Stone Edge might be able to hit KO me, but once I know, but once I come in and I know, okay, you're after doing more, just over half, because it is just over half, once I know you're doing that much, I can pivot out because I know you're locked. You're banded and you're locked into that. And on like a couple of weeks ago when we were against Flying Bird, once I get that information, I'm just going to have to go with my gut and not choke against i just going to know you're banded this roll with that um so i'm going to be able to kind of deal with terracula and it be very nicely and we also with this book be able to be uh, what's it called we uh we are not three really killed by a mega beedrill drill run which is absolutely great even with he knocks off my black stone so even if he gets rid of my item we're still able to wall beedrill very very nicely which is brilliant so among this is going to be very big for us to be able to kind of come in and out on his team very very uh, quite a bit and being able to um do a little bit of damage we're rocking out a sludge bomb giga train foul playing spore he's got one spore answer in sap sip gudra if he doesn't bring that we get three spores and that's really good for my team if he does bring sap sip gudra then i'm expecting it to come in immediately on my good on among us he'll get the plus one i can click foul play we're getting around you know depending on his set on his spread we're going to be getting around like 35 30 percent something around that range good really good chip um, for later in the game for Greninja and whatever so that's really good for us and he'll only be able to kind of old course with a fire blast if he's rocking it if he's 252 modest and gets a crit so that's a really safe play for us to be able to go foul play and then pivot out so that we can get a bit of chip on Gudra and also scout move sets like you know if he's carrying fire blast then we know okay Agron isn't a move here but if he's carrying something else then we know we can do something we can go for another move which is absolutely fantastic or we, we can go for another switch so that's the kind of idea behind Amoongus which is brilliant after that we are bringing Colossus R Mega Agron with Heavy Slam Earthquake Rest and Stealth Rocks bringing Max Bidef to deal with a Gudra in particular because Gudra's a little bit annoying and to also be able to kind of hopefully deal with Mew a little bit but he's not my first Mew answer but he's there for doing all of that um, but primarily Gudra and be able to kind of sponge a couple of hits off Road and Wash so we can actually Mega Evolve, click Stealth Rocks, get our rocks up and all that kind of good stuff because I feel like Road and Wash will be carrying Defog to be able to have hazard support for his team um, Moveset wise, I'm running Heavy Slam, Earthquake, Rest and Stealth Rock as I said. Uh, heavy Slam is our main stab move for Mew, Diggers B, Terrakion, all that kind of good stuff. I'm bringing Earthquake for Tor uh, for Torkoal. I was really tempted to bring Sleep Top because as I said at the top of the uh, of this video, I don't feel like Torkoal is a bring against me, but if he does bring it, I can't be walled by it. And if he brings Tog Maru, which is another big thing that I don't think is good, he's good, he bring, but Agron is going to be the answer to Togdemaru. I need to be able to uh, beat it. I need to be able to kind of threaten it with EQ, and that's going to be that. And the last thing I'm bringing in rest because it's going to be quite important for Agron to keep relatively healthy this week. And with me not bringing re uh, wish support, rest is my only form of recovery. So even if I just rest up and I don't get like um, what's it called, and I'm sleeping for a couple of turns, like the be like the best thing about it is that. Rotom can't three hit Kiyomi, which is brilliant. If it's if he's got a defensive Gudra, that cannot three hit Kiyomi. I can beat that. Um, so there's ways and means for me to be able to deal with it. If he brings Mega Beedrill, he, that cannot three hit Kiyomi. If he brings Comfe, that cannot three hit Kiyomi. So I'd be able to rest up on a lot of his bonds and still be able to be a decent enough health where I can click an offensive move and go for and put a bit of pressure on um, Arashi's team, which is really really nice. 
after that, which is we, we, so we got good book and we got a nice bit of wall breaking potential. But I do need a Mew answer, and that is going to be Vitini this week with uh, an assault fest with big great energy ball. You turn in Z head, but you've kind of seen me bring a similar set like this a few, uh, a few times where I do have the energy ball with me to be able to kind of hit the bulky water type that's going to come in uh, on Vitini. And that's exactly what energy ball is, is for. It's there for Rotom, Rotom Wash. If Rotom is down around uh, 30%, I can go in for energy ball and just pick off that Rotom. No problem, no hassle whatsoever. Move uh, move out of the way, Rotom. I got Victini's got places going, monster kill. V Cray is our main stab move because we just break through things, which is absolutely unreal. Your turn is for, for us to be able to pivot in and out. And then Zen Headbutt is basically kind of our middle ground move that if we know Rotom Wash is going to come in, we can go for or. Guru's just going to come in, we can go for Zen Headbutt, get a nice little bit of damage that, that can kind of help us out a little bit. I didn't want to kind of go for Glaciate because I feel like Zen Headbutt, like Zen Headbutt will do more than Glaciate to Guja because Guja's natural spadef um, bulk, it will, it will just render uh, Glaciate kind of useless to me. And Guja's a bit slow already, so I wasn't a big fan of that, whereas Zen Headbutt would be, be able to give me good damage, hit, hit, hit Guja on the more weaker side, and we will be able then to be able to kind of go for the U-turn and all that kind of good stuff because we haven't got the speed drop from V-Crate. So that's the idea behind it. But V-Crate is the main step, make no doubt about it. If Mew is a physical kind of set, like obviously Victini is in a little bit of trouble there because we're not going to be able to eat like a knockoff and whatever if he goes for SD when we come in. But I don't know if he brings an offensive Mew this week. Maybe he might do if he does bring Tarek on and Diggersby. But I feel like if he brings Tarek on and Diggersby, he probably might not. I have to wait and see. We don't know what Mew is going to be. We have to figure it out as the game goes on. But Victini is going to be our first port, uh, first answer into Mew so that we can kind of deal with it. And when I have an idea what Mew is, we should be able to kind of like hone in and deal with it very, very nicely. Speaking of dealing with Mew, and potentially being able to revenge kill that and other Pokemon on this team, you probably noticed that there was a little bit of a weakness to Greninja. And we are bringing Greninja this week. We're bringing Ice Beam, Spike, Surf and New Turn this week uh, with a Choice Scarf. Uh, I'm bringing yourself best, by the way, on Victini so I can eat more hits uh, from you if it's a special variant. Uh, that's my answer for that. But uh, it, this is our Greninja set, and I'm really, really happy uh, about it. I think this is the week where we're going to see Battle Bond really take effect. We're bringing Ice Beam for Gudra and potentially Diggersby, but Surfer's going to be the main move there. But Ice Beam mainly for Gudra if we can predict that switch coming in. Uh, Henry should be able to be killed once we get once we get a bit of chip on it, which is very, very nice. If I'm predicting a switch because he does not want to give me Battle Bond too easily. Like, he might bring in uh, Rotom Wash. I can go for Spikes, which is really, really nice. I can just get Spikes up. That forces Rotom to defog. That allows me to bring in Sylveon. Sylveon gets Hyper Voice. You get the idea. So, it gives me a nice little bit of pressure. Surf is my main stab move. Uh, big debate over Surf this week. Uh, surf or... <sighs> surf. It was big debate over Surf versus Hydro Pump because... If we, had gone hydro, if we had gone Hydro Pump, obviously we have the chance to miss, but we guarantee the Oko on Terrakion. But, uh, but if we have Surf, then we do miss out on the Oko on Terrakion. But it's a 100% accurate move. And I'm kind of talking about Okos when we're not Battle Bond. Once we get into our Battle Bond form, Surf's not a problem. We just click Surf and we're, we're doing damage, baby. We're doing damage. So, obviously a bit of a... Um, come to Jesus me when we were kind of thinking about what whether it had been Surf or Hydro Pump. But the idea, that, but we basically got to the point where, look, we just need like 12%, no, not 12%, 18% damage on Terrakion. And then non-Battle Bound Greninja will all co with Surf. So we don't need to worry about this too much. We just go, we just go for it. We just go with Surf and we figure the rest out later. If And we can scare Terrakion out. And if we get rocks up, two rounds of rocks, we can go for Surf. And it's not going to be a big deal. So... That's the idea behind Greninja. We will be able to kind of scare it out. Uh, I feel like oh, we will be able to scare track that out and go and kind of deal with it afterwards. So that's my the idea behind it. And then of course, U-turn is for that little bit of momentum when, we, when we're not too comfortable about going for spikes because we feel like he might stay in, say, with Diggers B or whatever. And we want to kind of get that middle ground play when we just go for U-turn instead. Uh, I'll bring enough speed to outspeed his... Do, 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 I believe it is Terrakion. Is it? No. Yeah, I believe Terrakion is his... Uh, Fastest Pokemon, so we have no speed to outspeed Terrakion uh, when we're not in Battle Bond form. Then we got 252 in Special Attack, the rest spread across bulk, which is very, very nice. Then last one is we are bringing Tusks and Mammoth Swine. Bit of a uh, back and forth as to what we're going to bring in as our six Pokemon this week, but we've, I, uh, I kind of felt like Mammoth Swine 
might do the best of work here uh, for us, and I'm kind of liking it. Because Mammoth Swine, if you look at Arash's team, can do a bit of damage to Diggersby because we can go for Ice Shard and pick that off if it's a quick attack variant. If like a bandit quick attack variant, I can come in, Ice Shard, boom. Scare that thing out, brilliant. Um, excuse me, uh, we can have, we have EQ for our main stab move, which is brilliant. Ice of Crash, Oko's Gudra, and then Knock Off because, again, if it's going to be the case where Mam um, Rotom is going to have to do so much, so Rotom is probably going to be the, the one, the first, um, Pokemon to come in on Mammoth Swine, we can knock off leftovers or bury on that, and then all of a sudden Rotom is eventually going to go down because he hasn't got the wish support to help Rotom recover his HP back too well. So that really is a big help for us, like uh, in that scenario. So that's the moveset there. I'll bring the Chopper Berry for uh, close combat to Rakion. So if he's scarfed and he's scarfed into close combat, then I can bring a Mammoth Swine. You know, when if, when, if, when, if, if, when it's all gone to pot, when it's a disaster, I can bring a Mammoth Swine. And I'm, guarant I'm guaranteed to, li uh, to, uh, to live, So which is, which is really, really nice for us, uh, uh, for obvious reasons. I'm guaranteed to live, I can just go for EQ, bop it, nice, nice and easy, brilliant. Now, if he's banded, he will all come me, but again, at that point, I'm only going to sack Mammoth Swine if I really need to know what he is. And if he is banded, then I know, like, he's going to be banded. Into close combat, he's got the defense drop. I bring Greninja, go for Surf. We, you know, Grant. E easy, easy pickings there for my Greninja. So, got the Travel Berry for that kind of scenario, for that kind of matchup. And hopefully, it will do the work for us. But uh, that is going to be our team this week, guys. Hopefully, we can pick up the W. I'm sorry, I don't really know be uh, better the landscape for playoffs or whatever. I should have a better idea going into our final battle uh, next week for the regular season it went out and I'll be able to give you guys a scoop as to where we are at, what we need to do, all the kind of fun stuff. But we are still unfortunately kind of something more similar to last. Uh, you guys have a better idea than I do at this point, so I won't get into it anymore. But yeah, uh, definitely go check out Rashi's channel, a link to his channel, all the other coaches' channels in the description down below. Uh, check out the other MPL content too. And yeah, on that note, I, what you call, hold on, if you enjoyed today's video, please click the like button down below for me. If you got any comments on today's video, whether it be good, bad, or different, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, including your thoughts on the team, all that kind of good stuff. And last but not least, if you want to see more Wex or Whaler action coming away on this channel or more content in general, please smash that subscribe button down below for me and click that bell icon. And I know I am going to get on up out of here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.